Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now this is a 4 Series Coupe. Originally the 4 Series Coupe came out back in 2013 and was to replace the 3 Series Coupe. There was a facelift model in September 2017 and that's what I have here. It's actually a 2018 plate but if you bought one today, a brand new one, it would be exactly the same as this. Now this is something a bit different. It's the flagship diesel model which is fast very very fast so i want to ask a simple question what are the pros and cons of owning and driving a fast bmw diesel The engine used in this car is a 3 litre straight six twin turbo diesel. It's also used in the 430D. The particular tune for the 435 means we're putting out 307 brake horsepower and more impressively 630 newton metres of torque. Yeah, that figure is impressive. Coupled to the X drive system, you're going to get 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds yep 4.7 and this is the fastest 4 series they make other than the M4 even so the 60 time is only 0.7 of a second slower I would love to put this up against an M4 in real world driving yes the M4 would pull away 0 to 60 but it's the mid range and would this be as quick as an M4 say rolling 30 to 60 be a very interesting i see to get hold of an m4 now to compare it against diesels are renowned for having lots of torque and as i mentioned 630 newton meters of torque in this case which means very smooth power delivery you can accelerate simply at any speed and you just get hurled down the road it makes for a very relaxing drive overtaking is so simple half the time the car doesn't even need to change down and i love that surge of power you just put your foot down and whoosh, you're off down the road it it's just fantastic in that way really really makes this a pleasure to drive so fuel consumption might not be your main concern you might not care so if you're going to get 20 miles to the gallon then an m4 will be right up your street but this on the other hand the 435 is supposed to give you very high 40s even low 50s which is impressive for a car that will do 60 in this time that is amazing if you are concerned about fuel consumption then the 420D will be a better bet for you. And that's supposed to do high 50s, even a low 60 if you're very, very careful. But as we're not talking about economical cars as such, we're talking about performance diesels, this does very well indeed. So you're certainly gonna be visiting the petrol station less often, but when you do, you go along, you grab the diesel fuel pump and it's covered in diesel. Diesel is sticky and horrible, so it transfers from the pump, it goes all over your hands. You need to find something to wipe it off with. Not nice at all. So we know this car is fast, it's really fast, but it's certainly missing something, and that is the soundtrack. A diesel does not sound good compared to its petrol equivalent. This one doesn't sound bad, but yeah, it's no petrol. So we're gonna pull out of a junction and we'll put our foot down. Sounds okay. There's a 
there is that straight six diesel which is impressive you know BMW are renowned for their diesel engines but it it just lacks something that the large engine petrol so like the M4 are going to sound like so we know this car is quick it's not quite M4 quick 0 to 60 but we want to put this to the test and see how lively this diesel actually is so I found somewhere relatively quiet we're going to pull over and do a 0 to 60 this is going to be interesting so before we get going we're going to put it in sport plus we'll put it in drive don't think there's launch controller stuff but accelerate down and go oh my word yep yep six yep that <laughs> whoa that was um that was fast uh that probably wasn't as quick as it could be these roads <laughs> are interesting to say the least safe to do so there's no traffic around but yeah wow that was a diesel that was a diesel that sums it up to me yeah impressive very very impressive for me the 4 series is not just about the driving experience it's about the look of the car so I found somewhere nice to park up and we can have a look around the outside so we'll start off at the front of the car now the biggest difference between this model and the model that's coming out in October 2020 is the grill this has got the smaller kidney grill and they are blacked out so it looks really good I'll put a picture up of the new 4 series because the grill is controversial to say the least I'm sure eventually we'll get to love it um, but we've got the traditional size on here the bonnet is got some nice crease and curves it gives it an aggressive look we've got led lights now this particular model we've got the m aero package so part of that on the front we've got some carbon fiber splitter now the main difference at the front anyway between pre lci and this one the actual air intakes the sort of aperture opens up and that's supposed to give it a more aggressive look but from the front i would say this is a very very good looking car the upgraded 20 inch alloys look fantastic on the car so at the front we've got 255 35 and at the rear 255 30 plenty of rubber to get all of the power and torque down on the road the side profile of the car we've got this swage line running from the slightly bulging wheel arches under the door handles and wraps itself into the rear tail light we've got various creases going on there and that combined with the coupe styling makes this look a very smart very elegant looking car admittedly there is a bit of a compromise with being a coupe this may be being selfish it means you get less headroom in the back but because i'm the driver i don't care what's going on they can sort of crook their neck slightly to one side if they want to be on the inside um, we've got a black side skirt color coded wing mirrors and built-in indicator got an m badge over here and on this particular model i don't think it actually does anything it does on the m4 you've got this style here and i think it actually should be letting air out from the air pressure and airflow physics based things from under here but that doesn't seem to do anything so from the side i think this is a great looking car part of the aero kit fitted is this carbon fiber rear ducktail spoiler under that to the left we've got x drive so that means it's got bmw's all-wheel drive system lower down we've got a matte black diffuser and being the lci model we've got brand new rear lights so i think from the back this is a very good looking car very smart indeed so let's have a look in the boot because although it is about looking good and driving well practicality is also a thing that i'd be interested in so this car's got a boot of 450 liters which is a very usable amount the only thing is it's maybe a bit shallow but you can easily fit a couple of suitcases in here now this particular version has got 
split seats which are a 40 60 you can actually get an upgrade on that which means you get a ski hatch down in the middle so you can carry two adults in the back and some extra things down the middle so that's the only thing this is missing we've got some underfloor storage as well which is great so the thing about this it's basically as practical as a three series but has got the gorgeous looks of a coupe definitely big thumbs up on that one so let's hop in the back and see what compromises you've got of being in a coupe over a standard three series In order to get in the back of the 4 Series, you have to do a couple of things. You've got a physical handle just here that you need to pull back. And then if you want to slide the seat forward, you've got an electronic control here. So you hold that down and eventually it will get to a position where you can try and clamber in the back of this car. This might be a bit undignified me climbing in the back here, but let's give it a go. So hopefully we should be able to clamber in without looking too much of an idiot. Well, less of an idiot. Put the seat back. That was pretty easy. The only thing I need to do is move the seat back to the position I was in when I was driving. So hold the button down and it comes back. Well, that's pretty good. So I'm just under six foot and that's the position I was driving in. I've got plenty of knee room. Well, about an inch of knee room here and I've got room underneath the seat to put my feet. The only problem is, which I did mention, and it's a problem with all coupes, is the headroom. Um, I can just about sit up straight. Well, maybe not. Um, you have to sort of tilt your head ever so slightly. So that's the only problem. But as I mentioned, I think being selfish, I'm gonna be driving. So the passenger will unfortunately gonna to have to put up with it or just get a shorter friend and it won't be an issue. Now we've got an armrest in the centre here with a couple of cup holders. Now this is where you'd have the ski hatch if you went for that optional extra. The other issue I've got with the back of this is there is basically nowhere to put anything. Neither seats have any like the, the mat pockets to put anything so you can't put anything there. The only thing we've got is this very small tray in the back um, so you'd fit your phone in there and that would be about it really. Uh, what else have we got? We've got small armrest, which my arm doesn't really fit on, <laughs> a couple of speakers, we've got controls for the air vents and a light. Ice fix as well, so it is practical to be a family car. So that's the back of the 4 Series. Yes, there are some compromises, but it's a coupe and I'd say it's pretty class leading, to be honest, um, certainly up there with the very best of them. Diesels have a bad image problem. If you think diesel, you'll probably think, hmm, knackered transit van with plumes of black smoke coming out the back of them. Yes, you do see vehicles like that. It doesn't have to be a transit van. Any vehicle, I should say. I'm not singling out transit vans. Um, Yes, you do get vehicles like that, but I've driven a number of modern diesels and they are just as efficient, in some cases, better for the environment than their petrol equivalent. So if you can get over that little issue of people thinking you hate the environment because you drive around in the diesel, then you're absolutely fine. Otherwise, yeah, that is a massive problem with diesels. So now we've found some smaller back roads, nice and tight and twisty. We can find out, can you actually have fun in a diesel vehicle? So what we're going to do, we're going to put it over to manual. So we'll put it across left hand side. Now we're over in manual. We've got various different modes for the car. So we've got the lowest one, Eco Pro. You've then got Comfort Sport and Sport Plus. So Sport Plus and sport everything has tightened up so we've got adaptive dampers in here so it's in its firmest setting the steering wheel is weighted up you've got better throttle response so this is in its angriest setting and this is where we need to be for these sort of roads so 
They are very tight and twisty. This isn't a small, small car, but it's certainly not massive. And, oh my word. Um, jeepers, this is quick. This is really quick. It doesn't sound amazing. It's got that straight six BMW and known for, but, oh my goodness me. so much there. I'm accelerating up a hill with such ease. That is ridiculous. So out of a junction we've got X drive. Oh, oh my word, that, that's simply amazing. And yes you can have fun <laughs> in a diesel way too much fun. <laughs> the pickup on that is immense. You could lose your license quite quickly in this thing if you're not careful. But oh, we're coming into a 60 mile an hour. Put your foot down. Oh, this. Chuck it into this. There is no sign of roll whatsoever. That corner is so flat. I've got so much confidence in this car. We've got, yes, it's X drive, so we can have 100% power to the rear if required, but it's normally a 60 40 split. So it feels rear wheel drive, so you're pushed into the corner, and then the front wheels, it drags you out. This is impressive. Some people might want the rear wheel drive, the more traditional feel, but it's a good halfway out, oh, here we go, oh my goodness me, <laughs> I might not be saying that much, <sighs> yeah, simply epic, that is brilliant. I've not driven an M4, but if it's anywhere near as good as this, which I have a feeling it would be, it's going to be an awesome car. So I just need to try and get my hands on an M4 and see what that's like. But I can't believe, although I'm going to get some hate in the comments here, that an M4 on these sort of roads is going to be much quicker. I really can't see it. The amount of torque we've got here is massive. I love the inside of this 4 Series, it is such a nice place to be. Although in October 2020, so only a couple of months away, they're releasing the brand new 4 Series, so there will be some significant changes inside the cabin. So this particular version, we've got iDrive version 6, we've got the professional navigation package. We're actually on iDrive 7 now for context. So we've got this larger screen, which is great to control this. We've got the jog wheel down by the gear selector. Probably the best in the market, to be honest. I cannot think of another infotainment system that is quite as easy to use, quite as intuitive as BMW's offering. Put in the comments down below if you can think of one that is better. I'm hoping it'll be a very short list if there is any whatsoever. But we've got a wheel we can turn and navigate through that. We've got shortcut buttons. So that is fantastic. Moving over to what I can see in front of me, the instrument binnacle. This has actually got analog dials as opposed to digital. The new version has got a completely digital dash. You've seen that across most of the modern BMW is now, they're all gone over to this new digital display. But I like this, I think this is quite a classical look, quite seamless and will probably age very, very well. So underneath the infotainment system we've got controls for the stereo, 
there's actually a CD player as well. So a bit of a classic thing going on there. Um, we've got controls for the dual climate control underneath that as well. Again, physical buttons. I'm a massive fan of physical buttons over purely touchscreen. I'm sure they'll improve on that over the years, but this is one of my favorite sort of things. So lower down, we've got a drawer, which you've got a couple of cup holders in. And that's about it over here. Not much in the way of connectivity, but again, the refresh version will have probably a lot more. You know, it's just a lack of USB ports. Although there is one underneath this central armrest you can lift up there is a place to pop your phone and a USB charging port. Steering wheel itself is a good size. It's not too fat, it's just about, just about the right size. So we've got paddles on either side for when you do decide to go over to manual. You can control the gears here. And there's very few buttons as well. We've just got cruise control, way of picking up your phone, and that's, that's about it. A very simple and uncluttered steering wheel. Got a really interesting proposition for this car. It's a 2018 model, so it's not brand new in terms of registration, but it is brand new in terms of shape. It's done 19,000 miles, so that's virtually nothing, especially with a diesel car. And the big difference is, this is up for sale at Chandler's BMW in Helsham for under 29,000 pounds. This new starts from 45,000 pounds. So as we've seen, it's got a couple of packs extra with it. It's got bigger wheels, it's got carbon fiber bits. So I can easily see this being a 55,000 pound car. That is a big difference in price. That's a massive amount of depreciation this car's done. And someone else has paid for that themselves. So you can have the latest car with full dealership facilities for significantly less money. And this is a brilliant car. So I personally think there are way more pros than cons. The biggest pro to me has to be the amount of torque this thing has. And then that leads into can you have fun? Yes. When you find the right roads, you can put the adaptive dampers in there, Sport Plus, everything becomes more firm and aggressive. And then when you accelerate away at any speed, you get a huge shove in your, in your, <laughs> um, yeah, it does that a lot. You get a huge shove in your back and a massive smile on your face. And when you want to do mundane motorway, you put it in Comfort Plus and just waft along. So that's my overall conclusion. I think you can have a lot of fun with the 435. It's a brilliant, brilliant car. And it's thanks to BMW Charles and Housham, I've got it. It's actually up for sale at the moment. I think it's like 28, 28, 29,000, which is a bargain really. So thanks to the guys down there. Give them a ring and take it out for a test drive or one of their many cars they've got down there. Anyway guys, I'm going to call this video to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome and remember to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.